with a brand new batch of internal Twitter documents having just been released, we have a clear glimpse into the type of deep, hidden systemic censorship that you and I have been subject to for the past three years now when trying to post anything about either COVID or the vaccine. And the details of the censorship are both shocking and they also blur the lines completely between government and private sector, between the FDA and Pfizer. So these new released emails from inside of Twitter, this revolving door is affecting your ability to speak freely online. You see, this man right here is Dr. Scott Gutlieb. He used to be the head of the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, before he left his official post to become a board member at a little known company called Pfizer. And according to this new batch of internal emails, which were just released by Elon Musk, well, it turns out that Dr. Gottlieb was, among other things, lobbying Twitter to take down posts from other doctors, which accurately pointed out that some studies were showing that natural immunity was superior to Pfizer's COVID vaccine. Specifically, according to these emails, on August 27th of 2021, Dr. Gottlieb wrote an email to a Twitter executive requesting that they take action against a certain post. Now, the Twitter post in question here was written by Dr. Brett Jerwa, who linked to an Israel study and wrote this, quote, It's now clear that COVID-19 natural immunity is superior to vaccine immunity by a lot. There's no science justification for vax proof, meaning vax mandate, if a person had prior infection. The CDC director and president of the U.S., who at that time was Joe Biden, must follow the science. If no previous infection, get vaccinated. Now, there are two very important things that you need to know about that particular Twitter post. The first is that the man who posted it, Dr. Brett Jurwa, he's not a random doctor. He himself was a former commissioner of the FDA. He's not some random doctor who happens to have an opinion. He was the former commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration. Secondly, the study that he linked to right below his message was a preprint study conducted by Israeli researchers who found after analyzing the health records within their medical system that natural immunity provided better protection against COVID than the vaccine immunity. Now, that's not me saying it. That was what the study said. Here was specifically what these researchers wrote as a part of their conclusion. And again, I'm not advocating this view for the YouTube censors. I'm just reading what was linked in the study that was posted by the former FDA commissioner. Quote, the data demonstrated that natural immunity confers longer lasting and stronger protection against infection, symptomatic disease, and hospitalization caused by the Delta variant of SARS-CoV-2 compared to the Pfizer two-dose vaccine-induced immunity. And even though at the time that the Twitter post was made, this was a preprint study, it has since been peer-reviewed and published in the Clinical Infectious Diseases Medical Journal. And so this is the situation. You have a former commissioner of the FDA posting on Twitter a link to a solid study out of Israel and making a comment about it. Now, whether the conclusions of that particular study are accurate and universal across the entire world, that's a topic of discussion. But that's a discussion that Dr. Scott Gutlieb did not want to see happen. Here's specifically what he wrote in an email to a Twitter executive. Quote, this is the kind of stuff that's corrosive. Here, he draws a sweeping conclusion off a single retrospective study in Israel that hasn't been peer reviewed but this tweet will end up going viral and driving news coverage. And wouldn't you know it, Dr. Gutlieb's email to that Twitter executive triggered a flurry of discussion on Twitter's internal messaging system, the system that the employees of the company were using to communicate with one another across different departments. And it's not a surprise why this caused such a commotion, because the Twitter executive who initially received Dr. Gottlieb's email requesting the review of the tweet, he passed it along to the group and added this, quote, please see this report from the former FDA commissioner. And then right below that was the email complaint. And so you see what happened there. Sure, Dr. Gottlieb was the former FDA commissioner, which is a title that naturally carries a lot of weight. But at the same time that he sent that message, he was actually a board member at Pfizer. And that was not mentioned in the chat. And so imagine for a moment that you're an employee sitting at your computer, you're an employee at Twitter in front of your computer, and suddenly a message pops up that says, the former FDA commissioner says that this post that's critical of the vaccine should be taken down. Now, that carries a lot of weight, and it's a lot different than the more accurate message that should have come in that said something like, a current board member at Pfizer is asking us to take down this pose that's critical of the vaccine. You see the contrast there. And that contrast, well, it made all the difference. Because according to the internal chats, a Twitter analyst went in and he reviewed that post. The analyst then determined that the post actually did not violate at all any of the misinformation rules. But Twitter still put a tag on it. You can see the tag up on your screen saying that the content is quote unquote misleading. And because of that tag, people were no longer able to share, reply to, or even to like the post. And then if they happened to click on the study that was linked in the post, instead of going to the actual Israel study, Twitter instead directed them to a page which explained why health officials recommend a vaccine for most people. 
And that is how the revolving door of government and the censorship machine of Twitter work together hand in glove.